Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? We're out on a river here in Portland and we're filming an addicted life with Pop Off. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just kind of talk about just some of the things that I think a lot of the addicts out there are curious about getting out here and targeting walleye and how to do it. And I think the first things first that have has always been a confusing question for me is tides. Like, yeah. you know, in where we're at in the Columbia River system, obviously everything's affected by tides. But yeah. I just never really thought is walleye affected by tides because yeah. they're not an Andromedas fish, but they're still in these systems that are getting pulled in and out by the tides. So you guys, if you're watching right now, comment below, what's your experience with tides? What have you noticed with walleye? If you're in other areas of the country, do you notice that tides really affect the walleye? And then to follow that up, what do you think? Like what's your opinion well, think, on tides and what do you think's the best? Yeah, you know, what, yeah. what, what's your Honestly, opinion? I think most people don't pay attention to tides. You know, like they just don't assume this far up river that there's a tidal push or that tide affects the fishery. But in my opinion, fish feed on those you know windows and stuff and with walleye being a predator species i think it's really really important the slower you go and and they're a predatory species so you know they, they ambush a lot so the slower you're going the the better it's gonna i mean the better opportunities to put your bait in front of the fish on an outgoing tide out here you can do three four miles per hour mm -hmm. you know and it's just too much so whatever you can do to slow yourself so i i prefer the incoming tide i mean it's it's typically uh you know the incoming tide is typically when we do most of our damage i mean you can still catch them on walleye you just gotta i mean on outgoing but you just gotta slow it down do different techniques so the other thing is you know i know like with the tide does it matter you're talking about fishing incoming but does it matter like say it's outgoing could you just then switch your your direction and troll up current so or is it harder that way i mean kind of what's your experience with that because i see guys doing both when i'm out yeah here. and you do and i think that everybody's doing their own technique you know um the way we were fishing today technically with like crawler harness getting that down river troll is just you're covering more ground you're putting your bait in my opinion it's just like trolling for salmon you know you're putting your bait in front of more fish instead of holding in one spot and kind of waiting for fish to come to you. These fish, like I said, are they're ambush predators, so they're staged up on all these Behind little humps, humps and, and rises stuff. and rock piles and all that. And so you're trying to cover as much of that water as you can. Now, if you find a big pile of them, then I've definitely had days where I stop and the current's just ripping and you can't do anything. You kind of hover fish them, you know, and, and but they got to really be concentrated. If they're not mm -hmm. concentrated, you're kind of, you know, it's, it's real tough to be successful doing it that way. Downhill troll just covers more ground. As long as you're doing the appropriate speed, that's the, that's the way I typically fish. Most of the guys that are doing the uphill troll are doing like crankbaits or other things for mm -hmm. them that I don't typically do, but it is, you know, there is ways to catch them like that. Up and down. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So now, are you looking at, like when you're talking about tides are you looking at the tides when you're reading them are you looking is it bigger or smaller tides like are you trying to figure out like okay it's a that tide's perfect i'm going out there tomorrow yeah. we're going to smash them yeah it's not quite it's not I, I wouldn't relate it to that as much because honestly like the exchange doesn't matter except for if it is a bigger tide i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna start a little bit later because i just know that that hard ripping out go is going to be tough to fish or tough to keep your baits in the zone so i try to look for either a smaller exchange or I just wait and go fishing a little bit later. Um, there's been days though, you know, it's it, 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 a lot of it has to be in the, you know, on the water and fishing because there yeah. has been days that we're out there and we're doing 3.2 miles per hour and we're catching fish, you know. But on a tough bite and you, you really want to have your gear dialed, you know, and have that stuff, you, you want your stuff fishing properly and the right speed and stuff like that. So it's not so much like, is it a two foot exchange or a three foot exchange? It's more like, you know, timing, you know, am I gonna come a little bit later, start earlier or, or that type of thing. It's not so much, you know, hey, it's a two foot exchange, let's go out and hammer wall. Yeah, you so it doesn't, I mean? it doesn't yeah. really. Yeah, but still, you, it, it is potential to catch fish and you can switch up and do different things. You know, you can go vertical and do like vertical jigging, which hopefully next time we go out, we can do some of that. And, yeah. And, uh, that can be a really effective way to fish when you're doing, you know, those high, you know, fast paced current, you can hold into it and kind of go vertical. Yeah, and so I was talk I was talking to Cameron, this was probably two years ago, and I was telling him there's this area where we're just smashing fish on trolling. You know, I'm yeah. just trolling worm harnesses. And Cam's like, dude, you need to try jigging them. Cause I was telling him how this this big rock pile and basically all these fish were staging around this rock pile. Yeah. And I was trying to troll on either side of it and pull them off the rock pile. Yeah. Well, then I went up there with Cam with jigs and we just kind of stayed. He used the kicker and we stayed on yeah. that rock pile. Yep. And dude, it was like nonstop. You're yeah. literally just sitting there ripping the fish off of the, the rock pile the whole time. Yeah, and that's where those like Minkotas come into play. You know, those bow mount motors, those those good, you know, the bow mount Minkotas are so awesome. It's because you can literally set it, just you spot know, lock spot it. lock it, and boom, you can sit right on that thing and just sit there and get it dialed in, and you can seriously just crush them. But that's another, you know, that type of fishing has to be 
when fish are congregated. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's a tough way to fish when fish are, are spread out and not necessarily in one one spot or you know, or they're spread out through an entire flat or two, three miles of river. It's tough to go do when there's not a ton of fish in early season and, and you know, late season or on a tough bite, it's that's not your best bet. I would say, you know, covering ground and distance and trolling. getting out there and trolling like we did today is gonna be your best opportunity. But And when you're doing that and you're covering a ton of ground, you've basically found that you know the worm the bottom bouncer with the worm harness and the yeah. smile you know what do you do you like the smile blade better you like the spinner blade better i mean so the, and then worm obviously is 100 percent necessary no yeah, matter what like yeah, talk about yeah. all that stuff real quick. so i would say i mean i started out using the spinner blades and that's where i i started it all from and i noticed that like you know as the tide slows or big incoming when when it, you're kind of really slowing down those spinner blades have a hard time moving so going to like the bling wings that um, Short Bus makes, those things are incredible. We were fishing those the other day and just smashing them on them. I unfortunately forgot them today, but they, they work really good. It's because you don't need a lot of current. You mm -hmm. know, those things will flutter in anything. It's the same thing with the smile blades. The reason I'm using those is because I can go as slow as I can possibly go and still have an effective fishing bait. Whereas you have, a, uh, a, I mean, even today when we were fishing that Brad's mini cup plug, mm -hmm. you know, if you looked when the tide started slowing down and we started crawling, that and that's thing when that thing stopped, kind of stopped working. Yeah, that's when it stopped getting bit. But when it was ripping out going up top, you know, when we were up there and it was ripping out going, and that was when it was getting bit the best, you know. So it's all about your conditions, you know. Pay attention to your electronics and see what speed you're going. And you know, if you're if you're going real slow. Low, you know put something else on don't don't just stick to one presentation because it the worm is necessary but there's a lot of different things you can put behind it you know i know a lot of guys that'll run just a bead you know when things are tough or ultra clear water they run just a bead in front of the harness so it's not always this one set in stone thing you can do a lot of different things with it so um yeah but worm <laughs> worm. Yeah, I mean, that, I pretty much heard that worm is the only way to go, but I have heard of people fishing like, you know, like little shiner swim baits behind it. I mean, all yeah, sorts of yeah. random. I've actually done, uh, I, I fished some crank baits behind it. I messed around with a lot of different things, you know, even behind, because it's hard to find a crank, you know, the, the depth out what here is so What about like one of those, those little Rapalas? That's what I, that's what I fish behind them. Like so a little I stick just, bait. Yeah, but you want to make sure if you're going to do stick bait, you got to do a floating bait. Yeah, one that doesn't dive yeah, very you far. A, you want a floating bait, because you're still going to be using your bottom walker. Like I'm you know, thinking, dude, like a floating jointed Rapala. Those work great, yeah. I know lots of guys that use them. And that's what I think, you know, you see some of these old timers out here doing, you know. And this is a, this walleye fishery is, it, this isn't your go up and put 60 fish in the boat type fishery, you know, but it, it can be really good. But I think everyone's just trying to figure out kind of, you know, where they sit, number one, the best and most effective way to fish them. And you're also dealing with kind of murky water too, you know. You get up in the Columbia, you sometimes you can see 20 feet down. That yeah. ain't the case. And there's quite here. a few walleye in the, both the Willamette and the Columbia yeah, systems. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, just knowing your conditions and knowing, you know, you're not gonna have the clarity in here that you're in here like you do in a lot of places. So staying in that bottom area, and that's why using the bottom walker with like a jointed, you know, that's what I did when I ran crank bases. I ran on a floating bait behind the bottom walker so it stayed in that zone. Cause it's hard when you have a bait, a crank bait, and you just throw it out behind the boat, you're always going, man, is it diving deep enough? Or, you know, am I even in the zone? You know, so you kind of got to, I started using the floating ones and that's how I first started doing it, you know, before I knew about the bottom yeah. walkers. It wasn't quite as effective as a worm, but you also didn't catch catfish, so. <laughs> yeah, true, right? <laughs> true. So talking more about conditions, have you noticed that like, sunny days are better than cloudy days or really like you know i remember you're saying the wind like killed the bite the other day like yeah. talk about some of those conditions that help you like that you've found to make your bait your day better and yeah. catching more fish yeah. i mean i have had productive days on you know weather is obviously huge whether you're salmon fishing walleye fishing whatever it is weather's going to be affect the bite one way or another um i have noticed with walleye wind is something that affects them when it gets super windy out it either shuts them down or I think they move, you know, because wind obviously shifts the bait and all yeah. that stuff. Just like when you're bass fishing, you know, the bass push to the edge because, you know, all the bait gets filtered in there. So wind is tough out here. That's that's one thing I haven't quite figured out. But sunny weather, 
just try different you know blades and stuff because color color's huge that's one thing i have learned is color is big you know if you're not getting bit on a color like today we started out and you were killing it on that color yep. nobody else had that color and then the, at the end the black blade started getting it so we switched up and we started i mean it paid off and got a couple extra fish so it's i don't think it's the weather as much as adapting what you're using to your weather conditions to let the, the conditions. fish tell you what's you know gonna work just don't be stuck on one certain thing because that's when i first started that's all i did i'm like chartreuse bead red bead and that's it you know and I, a silver blade but then i got got it handed to me a few times yeah. and i'm like well this sucks other people were catching them so you got to just kind of you know let the kid, the fish tell you what they're going to eat and, and don't be afraid to try different things you know so one, another thing i was kind of curious about what about depths are you targeting certain depths typically or what are you looking for when you're trying to find these walleye? yeah i mean like i like long stretches with hard bottom you know that's kind of what i'm looking for is anything with hard rock um, you know like mud you'd want to stay away from i mean that I, i've noticed that's one thing i have found out is that when they're in the mud when you're in the mud the fish aren't there you know you're typically catching perch and catfish and things yeah. like that but as far as like um depth wise it can be any depth we fish from 30 feet up to seven feet of water you know it's just a matter i think structure and bottom content is what's most important you know um gravel bottom hard bottom shelves rock ledges yeah. things like that rock piles those are the things that i think are they're more effective than you know a, a specific depth you know well cool dude i just figured we were out filming this addicted life would be a good opportunity to pick your brain i know there's a lot of fishing addicts out there that are curious about getting out and yeah. trying to catch walleye and it's it's an awesome fish that we have available to us in the northwest and they're good to eat i mean we killed a few of them talk a little bit about that you know the Willamette River, which we know of what everyone fishes, people talk about like how disgusting it is and why the hell would you ever eat a fish off the Willamette River. But yeah. you know, I talk I've eaten these. These yeah. are amazing. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what your theory is and kind of not just you, but guys that have been fishing this fishery for yeah. 25 years. So the the walleye is what Marlon's referring to is that, you know, the, the mercury content and things like that in the fish in this river, specifically this river. Um, they don't want you eating the catfish and things like that migratory fish like sturgeon salmon and walleye and that's what i'm gonna get into is are okay to eat so these fish is what the theory is but my theory and everything i've heard from odfw and and the department of fish and wildlife is these fish are migratory fish coming out of the columbia river and and into the willamette river so um they're not living their no. lives in this really nasty yeah. water you know like he's talking about mercury content obviously you eat a lot of fish with mercury you're gonna have some problems. Yeah. So yeah. they don't want you eating a bunch of fish out of not even just the Willamette, the Columbia. Columbia there's all sorts ocean. of species. I mean, even in Alaska, they tell us that with the halibut. Exactly know? right. So, but like you said, these ones are migratory. They're living in the Columbia. They don't have near as high a mercury content as no. like what a Willamette resident. And fish in fact, would have. that they're in here like less than a salmon. You know, these things are in here a very small window. I mean, or, or a very small catchable window. And if they are here at other times, nobody knows where they are, you know? <laughs> I mean, you got a very short window to catch these fish and they're, they're here and then they're gone. You know? yeah. by, by the time August rolls around, there's, they've disappeared. So, you know, it's it, they're great eating fish. I've eaten them tons, you know? I still don't recommend eating any fish that you're catching, you know, tons of it every single day and in every meal. But, you know, eating some walleye out of here, every one I've ever cut open has been beautiful white meat, which we'll show you guys later. And, and never seen worms or anything like that. I mean, they're just very healthy fish. All their scales are intact. And so, you know, I know guys have been eating for 30 years and they're still alive. Yeah, that's so. the thing. I'm sure, <laughs> you know? I'm sure it's completely fine. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Nick, are you off any walleye trips? Are there any addicts out there? Yeah, got? yeah. So I'll be doing walleye fishing through the, the last week uh, of let's July. Let's hold on for these guys out here. Let's show these guys out here having fun, Sean. <laughs> Got the good tunes going good, too. Good, good tunes. So anyway, you got some walleye. <laughs> so trips I have up? some walleye trips available. I'll be fishing walleye till about the third week in July. So if you guys want to get out, you can, you can get me on Facebook at Feel the Real Guide Service or FeelTheRealGuideService.com. And uh, yeah, reach out to me. I'd love to have you out. Some fun fishing. We'll put the link right down here as below as well in the description of this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, don't forget to tap that subscribe button and let us know if you want to see more walleye how-to tips, tricks. We've done some stuff with TJ, but we want to bring Nick and kind of get some more local Portland area walleye stuff going as well. So tap subscribe, turn that little bell on. We'll see you next time. See you on the water, guys.